Peace, everyone. I decided to do a quick reaction video. Um, Y'all may call it a reaction video. I call it a response video because I think this is a teaching moment. Um, I talk about this a lot. I came across this particular video. Um, it came on my timeline. And the title of it is Judge Joe Brown, What Does Black Mean? Luther Vandross and Teddy Pendergrass man up clip. Now, this particular clip is um, from a particular YouTuber by the name of The Real Dana. And Dana, you will see, is the host there, the hostess of this particular um, show. And what caught my attention is there's a conversation between the people on the panel and the caller now you're going to hear exactly everything here but this particular caller is calling about a particular question but before he gets into that question he one he elaborates on who he is he says that he's a haitian american then he goes in and says that He's a brown skinned man and does not identify with the word black. Um, those who know me and have checked out, you know, some of my videos, even my radio show, What Is Your Nationality, which is on WDRB Media on iHeartRadio. You can check it out every Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Know that I talk about this a lot, the aspect of this concept of race as opposed to um proclaiming your nationality and, and identifying yourself by way of nationality, what that really means. So it's a very interesting conversation uh, and I'll try to break it down as much as I can. It's not a long clip that I'm gonna play. I'm not gonna play um, the entire video because it's, they go into something else. But I think y'all should check this out. Wow. Hi Dana, hi Judge, how are we? Um, my name is Jules. Um, I'm, not, I'm originally from up north in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm, you know, originally uh, Haitian American. Um, so it's interesting not not to go too far into. I'm, I'm college educated. I went to a, actually a college in Massachusetts um, that was populated by a highly Jewish, highly Jewish population. Um, so I had you know, I grew up in the project. Excuse me. Of course. I mean. I have brain brain Obi, you need to invest in a microphone. <laughs> what, what school? I'm sorry. Brandeis University. Okay, I know that. Brandeis is a good school. It's a cool school, yeah. So I learned a lot as far as being from the projects and growing up in the in, you know in the hood and the hood, so to speak. Um, and I actually grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. So Harvard Square was right there, and my, my elementary school was right in Harvard Square. So I would go from Harvard Square back to the projects every single day. So that was an interesting experience for me growing up. So as a, as a, you know, as a, you know, brown skin man, I, I have an issue with the word black just because there's no definition of black. If you look at the word black, by definition, it says um, related to African people or a, a race in Africa. There is no race in Africa. So by definition, we're not black. So we, it's, it's a tough thing because we've always been saying that word. Um, I know we can go down a whole rabbit hole with that. So I don't want to go there. Um, but. It's a be all convenient description to deal with a perceived ethnic class of people. Right. It's right. treated as homogenous, even if it's not. Okay. I want to stop there. Because first thing I want to let you know is that before Judge Joe Brown even responds this particular caller says, I know that's a whole rabbit hole. I don't want to go down there. And then he was going to proceed to get into his question, right? So his whole conversation about the, uh, the concept of black, that was kind of a sidebar, but just, it was kind of a jewel, basically. He was dropping that little jewel about the word black. And if you notice, he was getting into the definition of the word black, right? What's interesting is Judge Joe Brown then proceeds to say it's a convenient term 
that's used for a group of people. I'm paraphrasing. Um, and it's described as homogenous, even if it's not. So a particular ethnic group of people. So let's go here. Okay. Right here in this website, it gives you a, a table. Now, I'm not saying that this is exact, but this gives this definitely tells you that there's a difference between race, ethnicity, and nationality. Okay. In the beginning, the caller said that he was a Haitian American, which is his nationality. Okay. Haiti is a is a nation. Okay. He lives in the United States of America. He's a Haitian American. Okay. Then he says he doesn't identify with black, which is a race. And then all of a sudden, Judge Joe Brown goes into this aspect of, of ethnicity. Now, let me be clear. I'm not doing this video to be condescending, you know, to any of the participants on this call, but I'm pointing out certain things that I'm observing that are quite interesting, especially if you're someone who actually studies this. So in this term, in this box, they tell you race, definition, physical characteristics that define a person as being a member of a specific group, example, skin color, hair color and texture, eye color, facial features, physical build. Now, a side note is that that definition of race is not exact. And we're going to get into why that is not an actual correct definition. But let's move on. Ethnicity. Cultural characteristics that define a person as being a member of a specific group. Lang examples are language, such as you speak Spanish, uh, you speak um, any of the African languages out of Nigeria, um, Japanese, Chinese, etc. Accent, religion, style of dress, hairstyles, social customs, food and dietary differences and restrictions and nationality which they have in the bottom the definition is the legal sense of belonging to a specific political nation state now the legal definition if you were to look it up in a law dictionary it says that nationality is the quality or character that belongs to a person that i'm sorry that arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state in the example here they said is citizenship birthright or naturalized. Actually, citizenship and natural nationality are not the same, though they, um, though they are related. So that gets into a whole nother conversation. But let's go even further, because I want to explore about this race thing. It says here, and this is from the worldatlas.com uh, website, speaking about race versus ethnicity versus nationality. What are the differences? It goes on to say the definition of race has not been consistent throughout history, nor is it consistent today based on people's beliefs. But generally speaking, many people think of a race as a group of people having certain physical characteristics and the most distinguishing physical characteristics has historically been skin color. Okay. So I'll just stop there. So this is where we get this classification thing or the origins of the classification of white, black. Keep in mind at one point in time in history, they tried to classify Chinese people as yellow people, the yellow race, but the Chinese people were not accepting that because they knew they had a nationality. Okay. But let me, continue on with this. So keep in mind just what Judge Joe Brown said and watch how the caller responds. Right, well, there's no racial group in Africa. Sir, whatever so you have down in the background, all because it's a feedback. I'm sorry, I think I I'll, I'll just go with my, I'll just on my phone. But um, yeah, there's no racial group in Africa. 
So that's the only issue I have with the with the term black because there's no by definition there's no term, there's no definition of black. Black is universal. No, I'm saying by 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 legal definition, if you look it up, like when you sign something on like any con like any application you fill, it says. I'm gonna stop there. Hold on. Let's back to track this bit. People, right? It's what is that feedback? as homogenous, even if it's not. Right. Well, there's no racial group in Africa. Sir, whatever so you have it. down in the background, all because it's a feedback. I'm sorry. I'll just go. I'll just on my phone. But um, yeah, there's no racial group in Africa, so that's the only issue I have with the with the term black because there's no by definition there's no term, there's no definition of black. Black is universal. No, I'm saying by 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 legal definition, if you look it up, like when you sign something on like any con like any application you fill. Okay. Now <laughs> this is where this is where it gets interesting. So the caller goes in and says there's no racial group in Africa. And he's correct. And the hostess, the real Dana, responds, black is universal. What does that mean? What does that mean, black is universal? What are you implying? He's telling, he's giving you a definition. He says there's no racial group in Africa. And then her response is black is universal. He's talking about the continent of Africa in the context of a racial group, the definition. And she goes into this black is universal, which I have, in my experience, come across this a lot. When you explain to people the term black being used by definition, particularly by legal definition, legal lawful definition, they will go into this aspect of, you know, black is triple stage darkness, is melanin, is the cosmos. The, these are convoluted concepts that really have nothing to do with what is being presented. It becomes a straw man argument. In other words, we're addressing what is the root of the meaning behind the word black. Not only that, how is black being applied in law, right? Remember, he said he's a brown skinned man. He didn't say, and they're not disputing that. They know that their skin is not black, right? But they, we're still as a people defaulting to that. And then when you explain the origins of the word black and how it's used in law, then you get the response of, well, black is universal. Well, black is the cosmos. Black is melanin. Black is triple stage dark. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about in terms of how this identification system of the term black doesn't benefit you. It doesn't even tie you to a nation. It doesn't even tie you to a nation. Now, the legal definition, we're going to get into that, okay? But let's explore what he's saying when he talks about filling out an application. It says, it says related to a racial group in Africa, and that there is no racial group in Africa. Africa is a continent. What application is this? Countries. College? And, and, and no, anything you look at. I know. You, um, well, I haven't seen that. I do see African American I mean, or black. Mm -hmm. I haven't what seen that. What do you have to look Dana, what? Okay. Right there. She responds again and says, what application are you talking about? So as he's speaking about it, she retorts, well, I haven't seen nothing about that. And, and keep in mind, the judge is interjecting. He's going into that and saying, I know what he's talking about. And we're going to see exactly what this young man is talking about, because this man is talking about law. But she still went into this thing of, well, you know, I've never seen that. I've seen, you know, African-American and this and that. This young man is speaking on the actual definition. When you go to the application and you check these boxes, those races that are set there 
are are there's a standard that is set by the government. We're going to go into that. Judge Joe Brown touches on it and then he goes off into something else. So let's just play the video. What he's saying is this. When you get an application, let's say if you go to buy a file, there's a federal form you fill out. The first box says Hispanic, non-Hispanic. Then they yeah. have Caucasian, African-American, or Black. And then they have other stuff down there, Pacific Rim, you know, this whole thing, yeah. Native American. Oh, you heard that? So he says, when you go and apply for certain things like a firearm, there is a federal form. And on this federal form, they will have a list of your race or the race to choose from. And he goes Hispanic, non-Hispanic, um, Pacific Islander, um, African-American, white, Caucasian, et cetera, et cetera, Native American, et cetera. So he's telling you, Judge Joe Brown, what he's saying is correct. And anyone who has gone in filled out federal forms will know this to be the case. And like I'm saying, the young man is speaking to the definitions of that. And we're going to go into that particular law. He's right. saying that but it's on these forms, but from Africa and from his perspective, from the Caribbean and the experiences they have down there. There is no such thing as black because there's no one race even in oh. Africa. There isn't. He there's no racial group else. of Africans. Okay. This is where Judge Joe Brown veers off. Because he says, based on his perspective, being in the Caribbean being from the Caribbean, because remember in the beginning, the young man said that he's a Haitian American. So it's kind of like, okay, that's the excuse we're going to give this man. Oh, he's from the Caribbean. So that's, you know, that's their thing to say, you know, they don't identify with this as being black. And then he goes on to say, because there's no one racial group, even in Africa. True, there is no one racial group, even in Africa, but that's not what he's saying. He's saying that there's no racial group in Africa. He's basing it on the definition of was put in the federal law. Now, the host, the hostess, the real Dana go and say, oh, well, he's talking about somewhere else. No, he's not talking about somewhere else. He's talking about the legal definition in this country, in the United States of America. So let's, let's just go into that. Okay. Um, but let's continue with what he's saying. And we're going to, in this off and then we're going to get into this no 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 there is no racial group in africa and that's how they associate right. black in america in america now like every other racial group in in america is associated with another country okay, so, so we that's a, that's it like where's where's this yes going? yes sorry about that no i i, I knew we were going to go down the rabbit hole that's not where i wanted to go um my right, question was a whole more, bunch of damn rabbit holes tonight, my, my question know, my, <laughs> okay so the moment he says, he says, there's no racial group in Africa. And that's how they define black in America. He's not talking about somewhere else. He's not talking about Haiti or the islands of the Caribbean. He's talking about America, United States of America. And he goes on to say, if you look at every other definition of the race, it connects you with a country, right? At that point, the real Dana comes in again and said, well, where are we, you know, where are you going with this? Is there a question? So now she cuts him off because now at this point in time, what he's exposing is the fact that by definition, by legal definition, black is a classification that robs you of your nationality by design. And then he says, you know, I didn't want to go ra ra down this rabbit hole. I didn't want to go down this rabbit hole. He said that before y'all got into steered him, steered him in that conversation. So let's go into this. Federal Directive 15. Federal, federal, this is Directive Number 15. Okay. This is found on the CDC website. 
Center of for Disease Control and Prevention. Office of Manage and Management and Budget. So this is the um, the governmental department that is responsible for this directive. Also, the Office of Management and Budget are responsible for the census that takes place every 10 years. And guess what you have to do? You have to check on the race box, right? Okay, so Office of Management and Budget, OMB, Directive Number 15, Race and Ethnic Standards for Federal Statistics and Administrative Reporting. That's key. Race and Ethnic Standards. That means they set a standard of how race and ethnicity is defined in this country for what federal statistics to keep statistics stats on you and administrative reporting okay so it goes and says this directive provides standard classifications classification so it's a classification system for record keeping collection and pre presentation of data on race and ethnicity in federal program administrative reporting and statistical activities, right? It goes on to say this classifications, these classifications should not be interpreted as being scientific or anthropological in nature, nor should they be viewed as determinants of eligibility for any participate participation in any federal program but they are. They have been developed in response to needs expressed by both the executive branch and the Congress to provide for collection of, of use of compatible, non-duplicated, exchangeable, racial, and ethnic data by federal agencies. So let's get to the definitions. Now this was adopted back in May 12, 1977. That's how long it's been. This classification system Federal directive has been in effect for a long time. So they're going to go through the basic definitions, the basic racial and ethnic categories for federal statistics and program administrative reporting are defined as follows. The first one, American Indian or Alaskan native, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of North America. Okay. We'll start, we'll just keep it at that, right? And who maintain and who maintains cultural identification through tribal affiliation and community recognition. The next is Asian or Pacific Islander. Okay. And that person is a person having origins in any of the original peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, the Indian continent or Pacific Islands, okay? We give examples, China, India, Japan, Korea, Philippine Islands, and Samoa. Then you have black, right in the middle. A person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa. That's what the young man was talking about, black racial groups. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to, let's just read the rest of this. We'll go back to black. Hispanic. A person of Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Central, or South American, or other Spanish cultural origin, regardless of race. That's why you'll have white Hispanic and non-white Hispanic, okay? Then, the last is white. A person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, North Africa, or the Middle East. Let's read that again. White. A person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, North Africa, or the Middle East. Interesting. The original peoples of North Africa? The original peoples of North Africa were dark skin. They wouldn't be what you would call, you would look at and say were Caucasian. The, the original peoples, but yet is classified as white. Let's go back to black. Black says, 
is a person having origins of any of the black racial groups of Africa. Hold on. Why do you use the term black to define black? No other, no other term here of race uses the same word to define itself. Then it is the only definition that says racial groups. Any other time it uses original peoples. Original peoples of North America, original peoples of the Far East, original peoples of Europe, North Africa, etc. But when it comes to black, they don't say the original peoples. They say black racial groups. Why is that? Because you have something called national origin, which is another term that they use um, in exchange for the original peoples of a particular country. National origin. And sometimes you will actually see that in the definition right here on the um if they ever define these racial groups on a form and they give you the definition they they more than likely will use the term national origin national origin connects with nationality but a black racial group is void of a nationality okay so let's go a little further this right here is the statement on race given by the American Anthropological Association. It was made on May 17th, 1998. Now remember what it said about Federal Directive 15, that it wasn't supposed to be used for anthropological purposes. It wasn't based on, let's go back. Um, it wasn't anthropological in nature, the classification. Why is that? That's because of this statement here. So you scroll down, going to this highlighted part. And by the way, the American Anthropological Association is the largest anthropological association in the world. These are scientists that deal with the history of the human people on this planet. Let's see what they say. Historical research has shown that the idea of race has always carried more meanings than mere physical differences. Indeed, physical variations in the human species have no meaning except the social ones that humans put on them. Today, scholars in many fields argue that race as it is understood in the United States of America was a social mechanism invented in the, during the 18th century to refer to those populations brought together in colonial America. The English and other European settlers, the conquered Indian peoples, and those peoples of Africa brought in to provide slave labor. Okay, it goes on to say, from its inception, this modern concept of race was modeled after an ancient theorem of the great chain of being, which posited natural categories on a hierarchy established by God or nature. Thus, race was a mode of classification linked specifically to peoples in the colonial situation. It subsumed a growing ideology and inequality devised to rationalize European attitudes and treatment of the conquered and enslaved peoples. I'll just stop there, okay? So race is a social construct and it's a classification system, as you see here, black being having origins in the black racial groups, right? And the brother was saying, there is no racial group in Africa because race is a social construct. We didn't identify ourselves by race to begin with. We identified ourselves by tribes and nations and nationality. And I just told you what nationality is. Now, I'll conclude by going into the Dred Scott case. Now, many people speak about the Dred Scott case of 1857, and they like to talk about um, the, the opinion given by Justice Roger B. Taney. Here I'm going to read this particular opinion by the justice 
Supreme Court Justice Daniels in this particular decision. And you can find this on um, the law cornell.edu in the Supreme Court text 6393. Okay, so I'm just going to read this whole paragraph and this is going to speak to this whole concept. And before I go into this, what I found was so ironic about or so interesting about this particular conversation, this short conversation, but very important conversation between the caller, Judge Joe Brown and the host, the real Dana, is that Judge Joe Brown is a former judge, a retired judge. He clearly should know this law. But yet, when this young man, this caller, went in and spoke about the actual um, definition, though he didn't really contest it, he didn't really, he didn't, um, really support it either. He didn't really go into it and address the fact that, yeah, black, black has no standing in law. Black has no standing in law. Black takes you out of your nationality because many of these individuals, and again, this is not a personal attack on Judge Joe Brown, but many of these people in these circles, they know about nationality. Many of them, uh, whether it's Cornell West, whether it's um, Michael Eric Dyson, any of them, you take any of them that are intellectuals in this space, they know about nationality, but they don't speak on it. They always go back to the black thing. I've even heard Roland Martin say that race is a social construct, right? When he was arguing with a white supremacist, but then when he's amongst his own people, he uses the term black. So it be, so really, when you speak about the convenience, which is not true convenience, it's a default system that our people use amongst us because it's been programmed on us. It's part of European psychology, as I just exposed in that statement on race back in 1998. But let me read this, and I'll conclude. This is the opinion from Justice Daniels on the Dred Scott case. It says, now... The following are truths which a knowledge of the history of the world and particularly of that of our own country compels us to know that the African Negro race never have been acknowledged as belonging to the family of nations that as amongst them, there never has been known or recognized by the inhabitants of the of other countries, anything partaking of the character of nationality or civil or political polity. That this race has been by all the nations of Europe regarded as subjects of capture or purchase, as subjects of commerce or traffic. And that the introduction of that race into every section of this country was not as members of civil or political piety, but as slaves, as property in the strictest sense of the term. Now, if you look at, read this from an emotional standpoint, you would be upset and say, oh, see, that's racist. If you read carefully from a legal standpoint, and he's basically admitting that the Negro race is a, is a construct. It's a made up thing. And then he goes on to say that the introduction of that race into every section of this country, there were already melanated people on, in, this, in this land, in this country that existed, but they weren't Negroes. They had a nationality. Again, they identified themselves by tribes and nations. But when you get into this constructed race of Negro or black or colored, or today African-American that does not connect you to a nation and a nationality, then it is viewed as property in the strictest sense of the term. And that's why to this day, there's the aspect of what is viewed as inequality amongst people identified as Negro, black, colored, and African-American. 
because that term, which is a mark placed on you, voids you of your nationality. In the, uni in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it says that every person has a right to a nationality, right? And so we really have to look at this and really get into the legality of it. And I'm, I was so happy to hear this caller call and, and speak on that. He spoke first. He, he stated his nationality from the beginning, Haitian American. He then he went into the whole aspect that he's not black. His skin is not black it's Brown. Right. So this concept that you having black skin, my black skin, that's a farce. And then he went into how the actual definition of this term black and even the term white is counterproductive. So, you know, we have to look into these things uh, with a hope of correcting it. So I just wanted to share that reaction video to you. And until next time, peace.